So the trial has included elderly medically non-fit patients, which um, deserve a mild, well-tolerated treatment. And the approved treatments, so-called DNA hypermethylating agents, are now the backbone of many of these studies. And in the DECIDER trial, we asked what is the value of the add-on of two orally given drugs. One is called uh, retinoic acid, or ATRA, the other is called uh, valproic acid. And um, the reason, the science behind the choice of these drugs uh, is complex, but um, from a patient's point of view, um, both have very moderate side effects when given alone. So the hope was that we could combine the hypermethylating agent decidabin with one or the other of these drugs and see better survival, better clinical results without added toxicity. And we were fortunate because that was what we saw for the combination of the drug decidabine, the hypermethylating agent, with the vitamin A derivative retinoic acid or ATRA, whereas we did not see a benefit uh, for the combination with the drug valproic acid. And the benefit in terms of longer overall survival from five months without the ATRA to eight months around with ATRA was not by paying the price of more toxicity. The result was surprising uh, in its strength. So the obvious question is, what's the mechanism of action here? So we are going back to the lab in order to better understand why this combination is so beneficial. And of course, we're very eager to confirm the results in another trial, also using ATRA, but uh, randomized against placebo, in the same combination with the cytopene. The major separation in patients, let's say 60 and older, is are they fit enough to tolerate standard aggressive chemotherapy alone or in combination with other drugs? Or are they not fit enough and will receive a mild, well-tolerated treatment like hypomethylating agents? And for the patients that are unfit, um, virtually every trial right now has, I mentioned already, a hypomethylating agent backbone and on top a rational second drug that hopefully will synergize in a way that patients derive more benefit than from the sole a hypermethylating agent, which is not curative, and the responses don't last uh, many years, so patients become resistant. So we're working on extending the time to resistance without adding toxicity. For the fit patients, um, it's one question how many of them can be cured, in other words, can be uh, led to stem cell transplantation, allogeneic stem cell transplantation. And the question becomes which of the treatments that are available are optimal to lead the patients to the curative approach. And uh, one question that we are following within uh, a European consortium, the so-called ERTC, is whether the milder treatment with a hypermethylating agent may be comparable to aggressive chemotherapy in leading patients successfully to this transplant which promises cure.